And of course, as always, we, uh, we want everybody to know that whatever is discussed on the show is the opinion of our guests and don't necessarily reflect our official policy. Although I do have to say, if we say something, maybe it does reflect something for me and her myself. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so don't, uh, somebody says something bad or, in, or politically incorrect, don't hold us to them in perpetuity. Or if we say something politically incorrect, it's not our fault. To just post a question and uh, we've got some questions we've written down but today is an open show and uh, open forum and uh we'll just run with it and of course uh you know thank you for joining us and uh today we're going to try and sell you whatever we can sell you what the heck well i mean but you have a double-edged problem which is that you have that reality but you also have a lack of used inventory which is the only thing that's actually moving it yeah. So the question there becomes, as a dealer, um, I need someone to trade in or buy a car in order to sell a new car. That's probably the new pivot point. But how am I going to get that used inventory I need just to keep the lights on? I mean, I've seen, I've seen dealers. I was at a dealer in Kelowna that happens to sell Highline cars uh, last weekend, I think it was. Um, they had a total of five used cars, only one of which was their brand in inventory. That was their entire used car inventory. <laughs> well, and I think I think the the good dealers are gonna gonna get off of their out of their desks. They're gonna walk to the back of the building, and they're gonna figure out how their dealership can function out of the drive through because they got to keep that happening. And I, if I was sitting in the chair, I would be offering blowout prices on oil changes just to get the cars in so I could do an appraisal and try to sweep them into a, a newer model keep their payment the same, even if that costs me money, because if I had to write it out of my used car, you know, I'm making 1200 bucks uh, in service on a used car, making 15 up front and two grand in the finance office. Yeah. Um, and I'm, so I might have to subsidize some of that from the front to the back, but just to keep that transition moving. Well, there was a fascinating yeah, like ad from a Delari store in Toronto, I think it was, I think it's a Honda store. They're having a one day service sale good idea it was special tire pricing I thought that was interesting go ahead well, here's what i have to say on, on this and here's my biggest fear is this last eight months nine months well seven eight depending where you were and when stores reopened has been like sitting down just shooting ducks one duck walks by you've got a you got a shotgun full of pellets you shoot him and he falls so what i mean by that is customer calls comes up you know goes online and says i want to book an appointment they come in they buy a car i think the dealers in general have become lazy i think the salespeople have become lazy and pardon me if i'm offending anybody because it's been really easy and november has been a wake-up call because in november they're all going oh no what do i do and then to your point barry we the in, the industry is 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 notorious for having a three-month memory span yeah, I what's my last, yeah if what's the last three months what's my last month oh what did i do great well now we've got a so-so month this month and all of a sudden they're going oh my god it's so slow i can't get cars but even if i could i couldn't sell them i can't get used because everybody wants this one and i can't get it and i think you're right i think you know the smart ones are going to sit and slap themselves in the face and say what do we have to do they're already going back to the old ways here. And that is, you know, before they, they, they discovered, wow, if we opened at 10 and closed at four, we were doing the same amount of business if we opened at nine and closed at 10 at night. And then they said, well, let's get back to normal. Some stores here were closed on, on Sundays during the, the height of the pandemic, we'll call it. And they were doing great business. Their salespeople were making money. Their service people were making money. Everybody was making money. Now, some of them have gone back to hiring a whole bunch of new people because they laid off the people they didn't like before. And here they are again, where they don't have a lot of people that know what they're doing and nobody knows what's going on. Yeah. Is it, what, what are you seeing, John? Like, you, 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 know, you, you know your dealers fairly intimately, you know, because you're in them and, and you know. Are, are you guys doing anything different out there? No, I mean, you know, uh, to Jeff's point, I, I think that what tends to happen is, you know, they fall back into the same rut that they were in before. It's, it's cyclical. It's not unusual, 
right? And uh, very few at this point in time in particular uh, want to invest in something that may be new to them or a new concept or a new way of doing things. It's, you know, uh, one of the age old stories is things are really good, so we don't need it. Things are really bad, so we can't afford it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, and, and to, yeah. again, to Jeff's point, you know, like too many of these guys, they, I, I always liken it to being on a, on a boat. And too many of these guys are sitting at the back of the boat looking at where they've been. They need to get their chair and go to the front of the boat and look at where they're going. And it's just, it, it's comical sometimes when you watch it happen and you're like, you could have fixed this. You could be on a completely different path by now and mm -hmm. the growing pains could be over. And, you know, again, not to, not to bang it on the same drum, but just for some people and some dealers, they use COVID as a training opportunity. And they took their whole team and they regrouped their team and they restructured and they rebuilt and they put processes that they couldn't do because they were just too busy and all that stuff. And they rolled it out and they all lifted the curtain and they were a whole new store and away they went. And others, you know, they just tucked in and said, I'm going to save all my money and I'm scared and I don't know what to do. And I think it's starting to show now. Well, I have to say something. Um, we talked a couple of times over the last few days. Um, on somebody that was uh, looking for a vehicle. And they reached out to a big dealer group out here and they, they, they put in a lead. They actually knew somebody there. This place has three stores here, big stores. And they said, no problem. Somebody will get a hold of you. He reached out like they own executive with the company. Three days later, nobody contacted him. Called again, this time got the man, the sales manager. I'm really sorry, we'll get a hold of you. The next day, a fleet sales manager calls them and they start talking about it. But this whole time, they're sort of like, well, you know, uh, we're great. So don't worry, we'll get back to you. And of course, you know, this is a particular used vehicle that, that they've moved from a rooftop to rooftop and has actually been in the company for a year and a half. And they're already two grand overpriced on the car and they're blowing it up. It didn't work out because they just couldn't be bothered. Then they reached out to another dealer um, on something else uh, out of town. And they did a deal. They drove all the way out there. The numbers, they made a mistake. Five hours they drove. You know what the dealer did for them? nothing yeah oh sorry we screwed up they did i don't even think they did that and opposite of that is an experience i had personally yesterday somebody reaches out to me and says you know refers to me and i need a used car i'm looking at a twelve thousand thirteen thousand dollar used suv it was a young guy him and his girlfriend i find one at a, at a prestige dealership here a 2012 Mits 11 mitsubishi outlander with 130k and this is a our Jaguar Bentley, Aston Martin, you know, the whole, that thing dealership. I reached out to the GM. I just sent him a quick uh, message on LinkedIn. Five minutes later, I get a message back from him. What's your number? Five minutes after that, his uh, GSM gets a hold of me and says, I've got it in the shop right now. Let me call you back. An hour later, he called me back. Here's the details on the car. Now that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And this is a place when where they deal, they got they got vehicles that the uh, people's lease payments are more money than that car. It was <laughs> exactly. 